Hello, and welcome to Dickens to Go. My name is Carl Wilson, and I have been reading Dickens for more than 50 years. I have read all of the novels multiple times, but I waited to read The Mystery of Edwin Drood until I was in my 30s. I wish I hadn't waited so long. It contained some of Dickens's most strange and beautiful writing. In February 1870, Dickens announced that a new novel, The Mystery of Edwin Drood, would begin appearing in his favored format, standalone monthly installments. Readers had waited almost five years since the end of the previous novel, Our Mutual Friend, for a new book-length story by the most famous writer in the English-speaking world. Sales of Our Mutual Friend had disappointed. Fewer than 20,000 copies of the final installment had sold. But readers were hopeful. And when the first pages of The Mystery of Edwin Drood appeared on March 31, 1870, Dickens was thrilled to learn that more than 50,000 copies sold, more in line with his earlier works, Bleak House, David Copperfield, and the book that had started it all, The Pickwick Papers. But what were readers to make of these cryptic opening lines, a phantasmagoric look into the mind of an opium user, is set by images sacred and profane, a blending of east and west, of glory and squalor. Here is the opening paragraph. An ancient English cathedral tower. How can the ancient English cathedral tower be here? The well-known massive gray square tower of the old cathedral. How can that be here? There is no spike of rusty iron in the air between the eye and it from any point of the real prospect. What is the spike that intervenes and who has set it up? Maybe it is set up by the Sultan's orders for the impaling of a horde of Turkish robbers one by one. It is so. For symbols clash and the Sultan goes by to his palace in long procession. 10,000 scimitars flash in the sunlight and thrice 10,000 dancing girls strew flowers. Then follow white elephants, caparisoned in countless gorgeous colors and infinite in number and attendance. Still, the cathedral tower rises in the background where it cannot be, and still no writhing figure is on the grim spike. Stay. Is the spike so low a thing as the rusty spike on the top of a post of an old bedstead that has tumbled all awry? Some vague period of drowsy laughter must be devoted to the consideration of this possibility. Less than three months later, on June 9, 1870, 150 years ago at age 58, Charles Dickens died with the novel less than half finished the world mourned. A Cockney girl was alleged to have asked, Dickens dead? Then will Father Christmas die too? An elaborate funeral and internment followed, with Dickens accorded the highest honors in English letters. Full burial in Poets' Corner at Westminster Abbey, near the remains of Geoffrey Chaucer. Dickens was followed in death by the cremated remains of Thomas Hardy, minus his heart, and Rudyard Kipling. The Mystery of Edwin Drood is a strange novel filled with storms, crypts, sinister characters, dominated by the images of Rochester, named Cloisterham in the novel, its cathedral and environs, only a few miles away from where Dickens spent his early childhood, where Pip met the convict in the opening pages of Great Expectations, and where Dickens died at his nearby home, Gads Hill Place. The day before he died, Dickens wrote his last words, a letter to one of his many admirers about Christian imagery in one of his works, 
thanking the writer for calling it to his attention. Earlier in the day, as he had done for several months, Dickens spent several hours in a small replica of a Swiss chalet near his home, where he did most of his writing. On June 8th, he wrote his final words of fiction, a wonderful bookend to the opening of the novel. Dickens returns to Rochester Cathedral, real this time, not the figment of John Jasper's opium haze, with a different set of images and figures, lyrical, almost angelic. Let us read words from the final pages of this great writer to speak for themselves about his love of life, of place, and of language. A brilliant morning shines on the old city. Its antiquities and ruins are surpassingly beautiful, with a lusty ivy glinting in the sun and the rich trees waving in the balmy air. Changes of glorious light from the moving boughs, songs of birds, scents from gardens, woods, and fields, or rather from the one great garden of the whole cultivated island in its yielding time, penetrate into the cathedral, subdue its earthy odor, and preach the resurrection and the life. The cold stone tombs of centuries ago grow warm, and flecks of brightness dart into the sternest marble corners of the building, fluttering there like wings. Readers would never learn the fate of Edwin Drood. Was he dead? Had he been murdered? And who was the mysterious Datchery with his fake hair and busybody ways? Would Rosa Bud marry? If so, whom? And who was the opium lady, Princess Puffer, and why was she so interested in John Jasper, her client? Dickens left no notes, virtually no clues, and readers have spent the last 150 years since Dickens' death trying to solve the last, greatest mystery that Dickens took with him to the grave. Read the mystery of Edwin Drood. Discover its mysteries for yourself. Thank you. <laughs>